All right, YouTube, what's up? Hey, everybody. How we doing? Welcome, welcome, everybody. By request this week, I, I can't remember exactly who it was who uh, requested this, but uh, we'll do a little bit of slide guitar tonight, talk a little bit about it. Uh, all right, Glenn, what's going on? Thank you, sir. Strum and Susan is here. It's Friday. Excellent. <laughs> Chad, welcome. Joe, Elias, OH, Mark, excellent. Awesome. Murray, greetings from BC. <laughs> Resonator in hand. Oh my goodness. Okay, cool. Andre's back. Hey, how's it going, Dan? Hello. All right. Well, great. Welcome, everybody. Sandy. Jonathan. Excellent. Hello, everybody. Hope everybody's well. Uh, down in the description, we've got another handout, PDF handout tonight. Rusty's here from Jersey. All right. Ron from Vegas. Excellent. All right, Susan, I'm glad to hear that that hand is healing up nicely and uh, working on the piano. Good job. Awesome. TJ, in the, in the house. All right. Well, I appreciate everybody tuning in. We've got a PDF in the description. Check the link. Download it. We've got some tabs for tonight. Uh, so uh, I know this was sort of uh, labeled as the uh, slide workshop. Really, it's sort of just a slide primer. I'm going I'm to just sort of start at the beginning. I'm not going to get super deep into it, although we can talk about stuff and we'll probably have lots of time for questions in the second half of the session. So uh, get your questions ready, anything guitar related. Um, but I'm going to stick this lesson just to standard tuning. Okay. So as we know, slide is really suited to uh, open tunings. And the reason for that is that, uh, you know, you can play full six string chords with the slide and move it all around. And it, it's uh, it's a lot richer that way. But uh, to get a start on it, we don't necessarily have to get into open tunings. And so I'm just going to talk a little bit about this technique uh, before we get to the examples. All right. So uh, first, let's talk about slides in general. So I've got a handful of slides here to show you. Uh, come in different materials. I've got this uh, giant one, the mud slide, which is a porcelain slide. So it comes in different materials. I've got a brass slide and some sort of stainless steel slide as well. Different sizes, right? These three slides, all different sizes here. Uh, you can also get, get glass slides and, uh, you know, <laughs> you see the guys playing with a beer bottle, all sorts of stuff uh, you can use in a pinch. Uh, so the best way to sort of get into this is just uh, hopefully uh, get to a music store and just try a bunch. You know, hopefully they have some that you can try. Just see how it works with your finger. Uh, so that's the next thing. What finger do we put it on, right? What uh, And so there's really no rule here uh, other than, you know, you rarely see anybody with the index finger sporting the slide. Okay. It's usually on the middle ring or pinky. Okay. East Tennessee, Jan, welcome, welcome, excellent. Um, so what's interesting is that, uh, you know, I've always gravitated to using the slide on the middle finger. And uh, I don't know what it is. The middle finger is a little more, uh, you know, sort of strong finger. Richard, Rick Sticks is here, all right. Welcome, welcome, sir. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, the middle finger can be a little wild and really vibey. Different sizes just for different hands, uh, maybe different tones, Joe. Um, different materials, definitely, you know, slightly different tones, depending on for what you're going for. And obviously the sizes, uh, you know, the smaller it is, right? Uh, for example, this one, uh, Hong Kong, Anthony, excellent. Good morning. Uh, this one doesn't work so well on my middle finger. It's it's a shorter slide and it's 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 a little bit tight there. So uh, this one, but this one works really well with my ring finger, and it's a little bit shorter, so you can be a little more precise with it, right? Versus uh, this brass one right here, right? Uh, which you know, kind of it's a little bit taller, right? And uh, you know, I can use that on on any of these fingers, even in rusty. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, 
you know, it's just kind of, you know, trial by fire. Hey, Bill, what's up? And just, you know, this one, for example, is just kind of huge. It's like this big bottle slide kind of thing. Uh, so just a different vibe, different feel, right? Lisa, welcome, welcome. Okay, so uh, as for the finger, you know, sort of go for comfort here, at least at first. Ah, yes, only halfway down the pinky, right? So yeah, you're going to find some some slides are, are you know, kind of narrow and can only go down, you know, halfway or whatever. Just try a bunch and see what you finger, see what you think. And also speaking of finger, you know, experiment with the different fingers. Uh, most slide players will choose the ring or the pinky. Okay. Um, the middle finger is less popular a choice, but you still see it a lot, but it's either going to be the ring or the pinky. And the reason is that, uh, you, you know, for example, the ring finger, you've got Charlie boy, what's up? What's up? Hello. Um, you've got your extra fingers here, particularly the, the pinky, right? So you can kind of combine stuff. You can fret some stuff and then, right? Come in with the slide and kind of go back and forth, right? Which is why the, the ring and the pinky are really, uh, you know, sort of uh, popular for that. Uh, ring finger st seems more stable, OH, exactly. So you're just gonna have to, you know, see what really resonates for you. <laughs> no pun, or pun intended for, for the resonators out there. Okay, so uh, I've just gotten used to using the middle finger slide and then I'm kind of like, I can fret stuff with my other fingers and then get that slide in there. It's a little more wild and it's sort of a different sound. You can get a lot more precise, I think, with the, the, the ring and the pinky and really develop those techniques of, of getting those notes nice and clean. All right, so that's the first thing. Experiment with which uh, finger you wanna work with on this. Uh, okay, so from there, what is the actual technique for making a uh, slide sound, okay? And obviously you can just take this to the strings, okay? Uh, what kind of pressure is needed? And this is where we have to kind of talk a little bit about the guitar you're using and the action that you have, okay? Because all of this figures into how you're going to approach your slide technique. All right, Jim, I'm glad you made it. No problem, we're just getting started. Uh, so this guitar has uh, generally low act. You know, you're gonna find on a lot of electrics that aren't set up for slide. Uh, lower action, you know, people like to play with lower action. So uh, if that's the case, uh, you need to be sort of really specific in the type of uh, technique you're gonna use with the slide. And basically what you wanna do, if you have low action, is to use like the minimum amount of pressure on the string as you can to get those notes to ring out, okay? And not really dig in because if you, if you dig in, you're going to start to, you know, if you press down too much, you're going to start to hear the frets, particularly on the top string, okay? Right? If you're, if you're pressing down too far, you can hear it, right? Rather than, if I, if I lighten up on my pressure, right, it sounds a lot better. So just very light if you have low action. On the other hand, if you have a guitar that's a little more set up for slide, perhaps the resonator, perhaps an acoustic guitar, or you can have an electric set up with higher action, you can dig in a little bit more and add a little more pressure and, and kind of squeeze a little more tone out of that, okay? So again, it, it's sort of a preference kind of thing. Uh, I will show you one thing that you can uh, look into getting if you have an extra you, you know, electric guitar around where if you don't want to fiddle with... Uh, completely resetting the guitar. Uh, you can buy these little uh, slide nut, I guess it's what it's called. And uh, you can see that it's a, it's a uh, I guess, what, what material is this? This is like some sort of brass or metal nut with it's pre-slotted, but you can see that it's up quite a bit higher. And it's meant to go on your nut, your existing nut. And then you can just put the strings on top of this and it'll really pull the strings off the fretboard. And uh, that way you could do something, you know, kind of like lap <laughs> slide kind of thing, or, you know, you can really dig in with, with a lot more and not sort of fret out with the slide. So that's one thing to think about. All right. 
Cool, cool. So let's get into how to make some notes. All right, we've selected the slide. We've selected our finger that we're going to do this. And now uh, going in with exercise one, we talk about slide intonation. We want to be able to make notes that are in tune. And the thing you have to realize, it's just like harmonics. We were talking about harmonics last week where, <laughs> hey, what's up, Gord Hilliard? <laughs> Love it, man. Thanks for joining tonight. It's been a while, Gordster. I hope you're doing well. Uh, okay, so for uh, making some notes intonate, which means uh, some good tuning, it's like the harmonics we were talking about last week. Instead of being where we would usually fret in between the fret wire, for you know, kind of right on the fretboard, we want to place the slide right over top the fret wire, just like what we did with the harmonics. Okay, so for example, if I'm going for this D note, seventh fret of the G string or the third string, I want to get that slide position over top of that fret wire. Okay, if I'm in the middle, I'm flat, right? So I got to get right onto that fret wire. Okay, so this brings us to, Kenneth is here, excellent, right on, right on. Uh, th this brings us to our first uh, exercise of the night. Just, uh, this is a way you can practice just intonating your notes and getting good tuning and getting a feel for where to place the slide. So I've chosen a G major scale on one string, the open G string, third string. Peter, he's here, right on, excellent. Uh, that's a good question, uh, TJ. I'm not sure what the brand is on this. Um, just you just kind of have to Google it and do a search. I can't remember. Uh, you know, it's, I found this probably on Reverb or eBay or something like that. Uh, maybe Guitar Center musician's friend has has one on the website. I have to check it out. Maybe Sweetwater. Not sure. Unfortunately, can't help you with that one. So talking about. Uh, Intonation. So talking about a scale. So if we just play a scale on, on one string, it's a great exercise for working on the tuning. Okay. And there you go. Murray has a great one. To, you know, he's got a tuner attached, clip tuner and a uh, you know, clip on tuner or whatever. Uh, and you can check your tuning and see where it is to put that slide right over top the fret. So kind of just go up a uh, I've chosen the major scale, so. Okay, so pretty close, right? So uh, there you go. So uh, we're looking into the brands, Grover, eBay, there we go. They're, yeah, they're, they're not very expensive at all. I like Andre with the 3D printer, that's pretty cool. <laughs> all right, cool. Well, thanks for uh, checking that out, everybody. So experiment with sliding into the note because that's really, you know, the heart of the technique is you want to learn how to slide it into a note and slide down from a note. So. Okay, so uh, let's talk about muting first, okay? Because this is really sort of crucial when it comes to playing a slide, particularly in like what we're doing in this session with standard tuning, okay? Because what's gonna happen is in standard tuning, uh, Wolverine's here, all right. <laughs> Wolverine, haven't seen you in a while. Hope you're well, buddy. Uh, you can't do a one sort of slide on all six strings and get a chord with standard tuning, okay? And we're gonna talk about that in the next couple exercises. So because of that, you have to be uh, really tuned into how to mute the strings around the slide. Because if you don't mute any strings, you're going to get some sympathetic ringing out, right? You can hear all the strings sort of ring out a little bit. So uh, this comes down to a question of whether to use your fingers, which really helps you hone in the muting. Uh, and it's a really cool, to place, uh, cool way to play slide just with your fingers or with your pick. You could play it with your pick too. You get some extra aggressiveness out of it, but you want to mute the strings. So the Charlie boy, that's how you do it. You've got to prevent the other strings from ringing by using muting. 
with the right hand or the picking hand. For the you lefties out there, the other hand, but your strumming hand, your picking hand, you've got to silence those strings if you want it to be clean. Now, sometimes you don't. Like, uh, you know, I think of Billy Gibbons playing slide, and it's kind of down and dirty a little bit. So he's got strings ringing out, and it's a vibe. And if you're going for that, that's totally cool, okay? But if you look at someone like George Harrison, who is a great slide player and plays melodies, just, you know, uh, just wonderful melodies, really clean, great slide melodies that really pop out. There's some heavy duty muting going on, okay, to make that as clean as possible. So for example, you can practice this now with the uh, scale exercise, exercise one. Now, check it out, I'm using my fingers, okay? And Kenneth, as far as, uh, you know, we did talk a little bit about the materials for the slide. Um, you know, they all have different tones. There's not one best one. It's more just what tone you're looking for, okay? They're going to have slightly different tones, metal, glass, porcelain, right? Um, just try them and see which ones you like and see if it's close to what you're going for, okay? that's There's no best sort of choice as far as slide materials. Check out my right hand here, okay? I'm going to be plucking the G string with my index finger and note where I've got my thumb on the like the very next adjacent string, which is the fourth string or the D string, and just putting my thumb and my karate chop down and anchoring over top of the low strings. Okay? Allows me to pluck the G string. And then with these free fingers up top, I'm just resting them on the top strings. So now. Okay, that's nice and clean. If I don't do that, okay, boom, it's not what you're going for, okay, because the other strings are going to ring out, okay, so you got to really clamp down on those strings. Okay, uh, same thing with the slide, okay, or, uh, same thing with the pick. The pick is going to give you some pretty aggressive, a lot more aggressive than the finger, right? But I'm making sure I've got the karate chopper down on the low strings. And uh, once again, I'm resting my fingers up top on the strings I'm not using. So Charlie, to answer your question, you can do it with the pick, okay? You just have to be, you have to be intentional about your muting. Okay. Happy Friday, right on, Jeff. And Peter, side note, thanks, the silver telly. I'll, I'll pull it out at the end here. <laughs> thanks, man. I appreciate you checking that out. I'll pull it. It's a part, my part caster telly uh, that I love. I'll, I'll pull it out if we have time at the end here. I'll grab it. All right, so that's pretty much uh, exercise one is just, you know, just getting the basics down, working on just getting some nice tuning and some muting to get nice and clean on single notes. Okay, Belgium. All right, welcome. Ka Katrian, Katrian, excellent. Okay, Katrian, maybe. Katrian, ah, yes. Murray, do you use your fingers to mute behind the slide as well? Yes, so great point as well. So I'm using it on the middle finger, so I'm not really set up to do that. So all my muting is going to have to come from the, the picking hand. But the guys that use it on the ring finger and even the pinky, you can follow the slide and mute the strings with your fretting hand, right? That's not a technique I'm really good at, so I can't really demonstrate it, but you can work that in, okay? You can have these fingers follow and just be resting on the, on the, str on the strings right behind the slide. So the slides, right? See, look at Okay? It's a lot cleaner than, right? Ah, I don't have the technique down as, as great as it should be, but uh, definitely that's the idea behind that. If you've got the pinky or the ring, you can kind of bring in those fingers underneath and, and just dampen the strings behind anywhere you go with the slide. All right? Excellent. How are we doing? Good? All right, so ready to see uh, 
this is, uh, oh yeah, one more thing. One more thing I was gonna, and then we'll move on to the chords to the second exercise is vibrato, okay? So one of the cool things you can do with the slide is do a crazy vibrato or, okay, just slide it back and forth. And you can go really wide with it if you want. Or you can go really tight with it. So this is a really expressive way to up your slide playing is to ex uh, experiment with the vibrato, okay? Slow, fast, and wide. And also, if you add the vibrato, it means you can be a little less concerned with absolute intonation up top here, right? Because if you know, if you're sliding, sliding in, you're kind of going up and down, you're around that note somewhere. So you don't have to be like bang on, right? Just depends on what you're going for musically. If, if, if you want to have the sound of like a heavy vibrato, then you don't have to be right on that, that fret, right? You kind of just be around it, right? Whereas if you're playing a melody and it's really important that you're getting those notes in tune, you're not going to be doing any vibrato and you're going to be real, trying to be as precise as you can. Okay. All right. So let's move on to exercise two. Before that, my friend Gord, is there a reason beyond just the comfort that you choose my index finger as the slide finger? Well, my ring uh, middle finger. I just didn't know what I was doing all those years ago and just got used to it. So, and just sort of, sort of developed the technique on my own. I didn't know anything about slide guitar, but I ended up somehow with a slide and just started messing around. And that's ended up being the most comfortable thing for me. So I am missing out a little bit on, uh, you know, some technique things that can be helpful with the ring and pinky. As we were talking about as Charlie, bro uh, uh, sorry, as Murray brought up about some muting with the other fingers and also just being able to play with your dominant fingers here and then come in with the slide, you know, and kind of go between the two, right? For me, I've always been this guy that was just kind of wild with it a little bit, okay? So it's all up to personal taste and all, uh, you know, what feels the most natural, comfortable, and kind of what you get used to too, I guess, right? All righty, thanks for the great questions, everybody. So uh, exercise two, we're gonna talk about chords, okay? <laughs> Harmonics with the slide, I love it, Jeff. Two weeks it, it, two weeks and one weekend of uh, practice, I love it. Uh, okay, so standard tuning again, right? Now, caveat again, if you go to open tunings, particularly something like an open D, which is the same as an open E, which is the same as an open C, right? Just they're just sort of a step apart, but the, the relative notes of the strings are the same. You're gonna have a six string chord. So that's gonna be a lot fuller of an experience if you choose to wanna use all six strings and just move that slide around. That's great, but we're in standard tuning right now. So we gotta know where some chord shapes are. And so what's great about Standard tuning is that the D, G, and B strings, or the fourth, third, and second strings, are a major triad, okay? So this is where a lot of our slide playing is going to rest as far as chords. Because we can get, the, tri the triad shape is just straight up, and just the open strings are just whatever fret you're on, right? So for the example I have in 2A is the key of C. So the C chord, the one chord, is up at the fifth fret. Okay, so now I've got D, G, and B strings, right? And now check out the muting, right? Okay, now I'm letting through the D, G, and B strings. So I've got a finger on the top string and I'm resting my thumb here on the A string and the low string, right? So, and what I'll do is I'll pluck, like I can, you know, like pluck each string with like the thumb uh, index and ring, and then sort of move those after the pluck to sort of silence those other strings, right? Right, so the one chord, fifth fret. So you've got a full C chord right there. Let's look at where the four and five chords are. Key of C, that's gonna be an F and G chord. And so in this exercise, you see it go up to the 10th fret. 
up to the 12th fret for the G. And then an octave up, you can go to the 17th fret for the upper C triad, right? Now, there's tons of songs that add the slide flavor to it where they're highlighting a chord just by doing something like this. Right? Like I can think of on Guitar Tricks, we've got uh, Highway 61, Bob Dylan, that Bob Dylan song. And on an A chord, uh, the guy playing slide, he's just like, he's just sliding up and just hitting two notes out of the chord, right? And then when it goes maybe to the D chord, he'll go that kind of thing. And so just like sort of, you know, a little goes a long way with sort of this slide vibe, right? So a lot of times uh, some of the slide parts in songs can be really simple, but really effective, right? If you just know where to hit those chords. So this is a great place to start. We've got the key of C. And of course, uh, I'm going to have to check that out, Gord. Right on. Johnny Winter, Highway 61. Peter, I wonder if anyone used two slides at the same time and play octaves. Oh, man, I, that breaks my brain. I have no idea. That sounds crazy. <laughs> cool. So, of course, just, uh, you know, I show you the key of C, but transpo like transpose them, you know, get familiar in all the keys, right? Like the open, you know, like the key of G, for example. You know, that's going to be playing off the open strings. And then your four and five are the fifth fret and the seventh fret. And then your octaves up at the 12th fret for the one chord, the G chord. All right, so then you can also get some minor triads, which the minor triads live on the top three strings. So I showed you the key of A minor. So if you go to the fifth fret of the top three strings, I've got to pick that a little bit better. But... Right, you've got the three notes that make up an A minor. So you've got that, and then your four and five chord again, D minor on the on the 10th fret, E minor on the 12th fret. So you hear a lot of songs where they'll do stuff like that. I think of Bullet the Blue Sky. Right? right? So hitting that E minor triad, I think. I don't know. I'm just just reminding me of that right now. Something like that. Maybe someone can help me out who actually knows that song. But uh, I feel like that's something like that. It's a minor triad getting slid down, right? Okay. So that's exercise 2B. Exercise 3. Uh, let's look at some blues riffs, that uh, some common sort of moves using these string sets. And the first one, I'm just using the dyad, just two of the strings, uh, which are tuned in sort of inverted power chords, basically. So right away, you recognize that blues riff, right? OK, so something like this. Right, classic blues move with the slide right there. In 3B, you see that I am adding the major third onto the chord which is up at the B string. So now this is a full triad doing the exact same riff. <laughs> That's right, that little bad to the bone, right? Cool. So uh, there you go. Just some classic, simple sort of stuff to start messing around with with the slide. <laughs> I love it, guys. All right. so. Uh, Took it a little bit f further into, uh, you know, we're kind of just sliding uh, sort of up into the chords in all those examples. Well, we can slide back down too. So uh, this is sort of a Zeppelin y thing, uh, exercise 3C. Uh, Right, check out like where you can actually do sort of a pull off. You can kind of, you know, if you, if you do the uh, third fret here, and then you can just pull the slide off and it pulls off to the open string. 
right? That first part of that is going from the second fret, just pulling right off. All right? So uh, you got a little bit of uh, In My Time of Dying, physical graffiti, right? Now look, I'm a classic rock guy. What, what can I tell you? Okay? <laughs> Also fun just to hit those chords and just arpeggiate them and strum them, right? Like, you know, if it goes to the upper G chord. <laughs> add a little bit of vibrato. It adds a lot of flavor to what you're doing. What's up, Mark? Happy Friday. Thanks for joining. <laughs> Lots of fun to be had there. Uh, all right, so now let's talk about, you know, sort of getting away from the chords and uh, just start focusing in a little more on just melodies, okay? So, uh, and of course, I, you know, I sort of said you can use picks for this, uh, but fingers work really well for single note melodies as well. So uh, I'm gonna kind of go with that for a little bit. But melody four, sort of free bird style of exercise, right? So. Okay, that's sort of the idea behind that one. So uh, really a chance to work on playing a melody on one string and, uh, you know, working on your vibrato and just keeping it clean, right? take it one further and kind of take that free bird sort of idea and start switching strings. So that's going to be the next thing you're going to want to kind of do, right? Is uh, um, add in those melodies and kind of go to different strings. I'm going to actually show you a, a lick after this that sort of has that idea a little bit. Okay. But, uh, you know, kind of work on your melodies a little bit. And Local guitar student and guitar tricks subscriber, John. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thanks for joining. Rusty. All right. So some Skinnerd. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Philippines. Welcome, welcome. Awesome. All right. So uh, I've got a couple licks here that I finished off this handout on. Uh, the first one being kind of a uh, band on the run type of thing. And uh, it's a little bit tricky in standard tuning to, to because, uh, you know, where some of some of the tri like, I mean, you've got these triads that are on the same fret, which lend themselves really well to using the slide. But then there's also other triads that you want to sort of outline that will not be as slide friendly. So you have to sort of develop your technique a little bit more to make it as clean as you can. So this is an example of that. I'm going to try and play it here. Okay, so uh, sort of a band on the run type of lick. Okay, now I have to use, I have to be really intentional about the muting because if I don't do that, you can see that you've got. Oh, I, I inadvertently put the wrong last note. I apologize for that on there. It should be the eighth fret. Okay. What I'm outlining in this particular lick is the C major triad, ninth fret of the G, eighth fret of the high strings. Okay. Okay. So I, I'm hitting, sliding into the C note, and then it's like a major pentatonic kind of thing where I'm going eighth fret of the B, sliding up to 10, right? And then sliding back to eight. 
Then doing that uh, minor third to the major third thing, which is a really popular sort of move on the slide, gives it a little bit of a, the bluesy flavor. And then ending off on the eighth fret of the B. So everybody kind of make a note of that. If you've uh, you know downloaded this, make a little note that that should end off on a G note instead of the A note. Part of the C major triad. Sorry about that mistake, everybody. And you see if I don't, if I'm not as intentional about cutting off this note right here, going to the eighth fret, you see how you have to move that slide one fret? So in order to keep it clean, I sort of have to cut off that G string note right as I'm about to pluck the B string note and move that slide really quickly. Because if I don't do that, and if I let that G string ring out, it's not going to sound good. It's going to go minor on me, right? Does everybody kind of get that? So, Right? So that's sort of the idea with that lick a little bit and just showing you how you kind of have to take care. If you're, if you're playing triad shapes, like, for example, you know, like, say, a major triad shape where you got the seventh fret of the high string and then... Uh, you know, ninth fret of the B and G string. You know, they're not all at the same fret, so you have to just sort of... If you don't mute that high string when you're kind of highlighting that triad, you're going to end up with sort of a six sound, major sixth sound which might not be what you're going for so you know it's sort of the thing that you have to keep track of with standard tuning but plenty of players uh play really great in standard tuning just sort of adjusting that technique and paying attention to that kind of thing so the final lick in the handout is uh, a little uh, another zeppelin -y kind of thing more of a bluesy thing right um And this one, again, I'm finishing off with this E major triad, ninth fret of the D, G, and B. And so what we're outlining, those are the minor pentatonic notes right there. So it's really good to sort of visualize in your mind. We're sort of playing out of that, that micro box, 12 and 10 on the high string, 12 and 10 on the B. 12 and 9 on the G string. That's your minor pentatonic, E minor pentatonic, right? So, but a, a common move here is once again to grab the minor third going to the major third and completing that major triad. So the minor third is going to be one fret down on the B string and you slide it one fret up, and then your slide is on the right fret to grab the rest of the chord, okay? So this is a really great... Great way to uh, add a little bit of embellishment to these major triads and give it a little bit of a bluesy quality, right? You can end a lot of licks with that kind of move right there, you know. Here's another cool move off of that triad shape, okay? Where if you're going to use the minor third to the major third on the B string, uh, I'm going to stay with uh, E. What's up, James? How you doing? Okay, you've also got your minor pentatonic box. Okay, right below that. Because you've got your root note right here, so now you've got the other 
E minor pentatonic, right? Nine, seven, nine, seven, 10, seven, coming down from the G, D, and then A string. So. Right. So what I say is to take it sort of the next step is experiment with some of those uh, minor pentatonic or any scale patterns that, you know, and just experiment with like, where are those chords? Okay, and find where those notes are and just kind of mess around with the slide a little bit. Okay. Right? Everybody kind of sticking with it? Cool. So th those are all the exercises kind of I had for this one. So, uh, you know, hopefully you find them useful and uh, kind of inspire a little bit of messing around with this stuff and uh, a little bit of experimentation, trying to get this technique under the fingers. I think I've sort of covered everything that I was hoping to. And uh, <laughs> I can take some questions now. we got 20 minutes left. Uh, otherwise, I'll sort of mess around a little bit. Uh, with some slide, but uh, let's see if I can. Hit me up if you got any questions. <laughs> some George Thurgood. <laughs> St standard tuning slide will help you learn the neck. Absolutely. So there you go. You've already found a positive for working on that. Finding it useful. Great. Excellent. Awesome, Glenn. Uh, man, I don't think I, I taught any Thurgood that had slide in it. Oh, I did. But it was in open E tuning, right? So there you go. <laughs> Wolverine's got a question. This is a good question. Is it best to learn slide? It's standard tuning. I see some songs are in open G and strange tuning. All right, uh, Wolverine, good question. So uh, I would say it, it sort of doesn't matter, uh, you know, at least until you get some mobility and technique under your fingers. Uh, certainly, you know, go with what, uh, what I would say is learn some songs that you're into that features some slide playing and then whatever tuning that's in, you know, kind of go with it. Right. Um, but what's really helpful is to, you know, be able to learn, not only learn the parts from the tab, but then take a step back from it and sort of try to visualize, you know, what, what the chord shapes are, right. And where you are on the fretboard. And that's kind of hard to do with open tunings. Because, you know, it's hard enough just to learn where the notes are for standard tuning, right? So that's one positive for, uh, you know, picking songs that have slide parts in standard tuning. And at least, you know, the fretboard a little bit better so that you can sort of visualize, oh, am I playing off a chord shape here? Is there a scale pattern that I'm using, right? It's a, lo it's a little more familiar, the fretboard. But what I always, uh, you know, we did a, a alternate tunings session a couple months ago. Uh, might have been a little bit longer ago. Um, we might have been on Facebook. So uh, search the Facebook lives for that. But uh, what's really helpful is to know which strings, you know, how many steps or half steps they've moved from standards so that you can sort of adjust your knowledge of the fretboard. Right? Like even something simple like drop D. Right? Now anything I play, I know I have to play two frets up on the low string, right? So, so you know, if we go to open G, but if I'm in drop D, I know I, I can't put the, uh, the root note on the third fret of the low string because it won't be right. I've tuned it down a full step. So I have to compensate 
by playing where the G is now at the fifth fret, right? So if you kind of get used to where the chords are in your alternate tunings and visualize those, then it makes it a little bit easier to know kind of what you're doing. Get an overall sense of how you're hitting the chords and embellishing, right? Right, cool. Hopefully that uh, that makes sense. Oh, any song suggestions at GT? Yes, Traveling Wilburys, George Harrison. Those are all standard tuning and great slide parts in some of those songs. Uh, maybe some of you guys can help me out with more. Uh, there's actually lots of slide stuff. I mentioned the Bob Dylan stuff earlier. Uh, there's Zeppelin on there. You shook me. Zeppelin's on there. That's standard tuning. Okay. So, uh, right on Wolverine. Uh, so that so, sort of gets you started a little bit. Uh, and there's some blues stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Richard, chime in with Little Red Rooster. Search the blues stuff uh, because uh, there is some standard tuning blues uh, tutorials as well if blues is more your thing, okay? Great. So, yes, uh, Jim reminded me. We had a, uh, somebody on the forum. Right on, Rusty. I appreciate you being here. Thanks, man. Chad, slide on acoustic is challenging to sound clean and full. It is. It absolutely is. So you really, you know, the acoustic guitar is just sort of a different animal a little bit. You got to work a little bit harder on the acoustic to get everything sounding clean and full. So that's just the nature of the beast. But uh, definitely worth the effort for sure. Well worth, well worth the effort. Uh, yeah, so Jim reminded me that uh, we had a student on the forum asking questions about what, you know, what do you do, and this is not slide related at this point, but I, I actually mentioned that I would talk about it tonight. If So if, uh, I can't remember your name, but if you're uh, on here tonight. Uh, oh yeah, we do have Freebird on there too. There you go. Uh, there's also another Skinnerd song that I taught on Guitar Tricks that had some standard tuning slide stuff too. I can't remember the name of the tune, but just look up the Skinnerd stuff. Uh, there's another one in there. It was the ballad of something. Man, I can't remember. I'm just horrible at remembering song names. Uh, so sort of switch gears a little bit and just talk about this for a couple minutes. Uh, I had a student ask about, well, what happens if, you know, my I feel like my chord changes are good, but my strumming hand is not keeping up. What can I do to strengthen this? Okay. So uh, a lot of you who have been with me for a while on these sessions, you know, you've probably heard a lot of uh, sort of my advice. It's going to be really similar here. Okay. So what you want to do is if you feel like your strum needs work, we've got to isolate that. Okay. And we've got to put it into some uninterrupted sort of practice for five minute, 10 minute chunks. And we've got to work with it really slowly. And we've got to work with it with a metronome or a drum groove or something just to keep us honest with the timing. Okay. But we got to go slow. The other thing we have to do is isolate what we're working on. So the first thing that you should do in these five or 10 minute chunks is not worry about your chord changes for this. Ballad of Curtis Lowe, that's the one. <laughs> I knew you'd come up with it, Wolverine. Um, so, you know, if, you, if you're thinking about too many things at once, oh, you're so vain, had some slide. That's right, Glenn, good one. Half of, Part of the solo had slide. I think. Yeah, that's right. Cool. Uh, Coldplay. There's a Coldplay song on there that's got some slide stuff. I think it's called Trouble. Was Trouble the one? Can't remember. <laughs> oh, yeah. More human than human. That would be a great one. Cool. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you've got too many things going on that you're trying to practice at once, it's probably not going to be as effective. So you've got to isolate. So if it's like, okay, I know my weakness is my strumming hand, you know, I'm just not strong enough or fast enough with it. And my chord changes are fine. Okay. Don't worry about the chord changes. When you practice your strum, stay on one chord. That's one thing less to worry about, right? One more thing less that you don't have to worry about. Okay. So just stay on one chord. 
Now, figure out what the strum pattern that's giving you trouble, okay? And slow it way down so that you can mimic and make sure that your downs and ups are solid against the timing, okay? Because what you want to have with strumming is this down up motion. Now, not always, generally speaking, this is sort of the thing that is the downfall of everybody is let's say we're doing eighth note strums and the strum pattern is something like this. Down, down, up, up, down. You got to work that stuff out because we want to have this going locked to the groove, locked to timing. If we start going down, down, up, up, down, like that, like kind of sort of rigid and sort of not relaxed and flowing, it's going to affect your timing, okay? And it's going to also limit your ability to go faster with it, okay? But if you're locked down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up with a click or whatever your time reference is, and you keep that motion going, but figure out where it is you have to strike the strings, right? Like I'm going down, but then the next upstroke, I'm not strumming the string. So it's down, down, up, up, down, 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 down up, up. You see, I'm doing this the whole time, right? So that is crucial. It's the same thing. And this is the same thing if all of those were downstrokes too. For example, if it's a song that's a little bit slower, and the guitar player is using all downstrokes, or if you've determined that you want to use downstrokes, uh, you know, as just a, a musical choice, it sounds more consistent. It sounds, it gives a more sort of uh, aggressive sound. Then you got to slow that down and just figure out where you're striking the strings and where you're not, and make sure you're doing it correctly. And at that point, repetition. Repetition, repetition, repetition. It's all about the repetition, right? At slow speeds, knowing that you're nailing it, you're executing it properly, okay? If you're still not, you gotta go slower. You gotta keep slowing it down to that tempo where you can execute it properly. And then what you have to do is just burn it in. It's like an athlete, right? Repetition, so it gets, programs the muscles, gets rid of the resistance and burns it into muscle memory, right? And that's the way you got to work it, okay? We had some extra uh, sort of questions about that. Well, how do I slow down the song that I'm playing with? That kind of thing. Okay, so for those of you that don't know, if you're on Guitar Tricks and you're on the browser version of it, there are speed buttons on the side of every video, making it very easy to slow down whatever it is you're working on. Okay, 90% speed, 75%, 50%, wherever it is you got to get to and just drill through it and then keep checking. Like it, you might do, a, you know, two or three sessions at the same slow tempo. And then every couple sessions, check it, bump the tempo and see if you can hang. If you can hang, great. You found your next sort of step. It's working, right? If you haven't, got to go back down. You got to do more repetition. And we're going to keep pushing that threshold where it sort of falls off. You know, the wheels fall off. We got to be right under that threshold always. And eventually you're going to burn it in. You're going to be able to place faster and match it up with your chord changes. Uh, as for slowing down stuff, uh, there's apps that do it. There's transcribe is called one where you can load in an MP3 or a wave file and tweak the tempo and it doesn't change the pitch. There's another one called the amazing slow downer. There are digital audio workstations. If anybody's into recording like GarageBand or something like that, actually, I don't know if GarageBand slows stuff down. I think it does, but uh, you can uh, use those programs to slow stuff down. All right. There are hardware units that'll do it. A uh, little practice tools. So, and also YouTube, I wanted to mention YouTube videos have the ability to slow down. You can go to 75 and 50% speed on YouTube videos. It's in the little settings cog wheel. So we've got a lot of amazing uh, practice uh, resources at our fingertips these days. Certainly way more than when I started playing. So, uh, so you've got a lot of help if you need it. All right. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Just talking about right hand technique. It goes for anything. You've got to isolate what it is that you need to strengthen. 
okay? And then just zoom in on it, five, 10 minute chunks, slow repetition, 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 all right? Okay, uh, let's see. Finding muting the strings when working on strumming helps me. It doesn't sound as confusing. Excellent, good, 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 good. <laughs> That's a good one too, right? So yeah, not even, you know, I suggested stay on a chord. You don't even need to do that. Just hold the strings and work on the, right? That's a good way too. Excellent. Uh, Chad switched from, oh, it went super heavy for drop, drop tuning chugs, heavy pick. Yes, absolutely. So uh, what I will say about pick choice is generally speaking, I like a thicker pick for the uh, electric and uh, sort of a thinner pick for acoustic. Feels a lot nicer, but uh, man, you can do a lot of different approaches with different sized picks, right? Um, especially for the drop heavy stuff, the heavier, the better. It's more aggressive. It just feels really solid in your hand. And of course, you're always going to be adjusting for what you're playing. So that's really cool. Strumming while sliding sounds wrong. Uh, it just kind of depends on how you're doing it, right? Like, and if I was in an open tuning, I could be strumming the whole thing. Okay, so uh, it's about holding that, that slide right there. Fix it so it's in tune or giving it a little bit of vibrato, right? If you're in an open tuning, you can do, you could strum all six strings and play a chord. In this case, I have to target my strumming on standard tuning. Right? So, uh, yeah, and when you strum, it's going to be a little more vibey, a little more messy. <laughs> so uh, there you go. Uh, learning to fly. Yeah, so there you go. Short slide solo, super melodic, pretty easy. Thank you. Carmine, excellent. Uh, that's a great suggestion as well. Awesome. Uh, we've got Open G, Brown Sugar, and Slide Solo where the sax plays. Excellent. Yeah, the Rolling Stone stuff. Lots of, uh, yeah, there's some slide there, right? Don't Can't you hear me knocking? Is that open? That's Open G, right? Killer slide playing on that one. Thanks, Wolverine. <laughs> right on up the irons <laughs> i'm gonna end off playing iron maiden riffs uh hope you continue the friday nights yeah that's that's what we're doing and uh thanks so much for the support we uh super appreciate it uh promise maybe uh i think it was peter let's pull the silver parts caster down for those of you who have not seen that i don't really use this one for uh for lessons <laughs> But uh, let me just fire this guy up. So I wanted this uh, rock and roll machine. <laughs> it's got the mirror pick guard, man. Like it's sort of like the Glenn Tipton Judas Priest thing. But anyway, uh, a couple of years ago, I bought this uh, pine body and just sort of maimed it. As you can see, <laughs> it's like the world's worst arm contour right here like me and, and, a, and a file. Horrible. <laughs> but hey, Jeff Beck did it, right? Why not? So uh, yeah, it's got a kill switch and uh, just volume, but I can split. So I've got like a, a DiMarzio tone zone. So it's a full humbucker in there that I can split to kind of do it, right? And uh, actually this neck, it's so funny. This neck came off like a really cheap, Line six Variax guitar from way back, and uh, it crapped out on me. The saddles stopped working, like it, it just it, it had been sitting for years. So I pulled the neck off it and, and put it on this pine body. And I tell you, this is like seriously one of my favorite guitars. And yes, I did file this, it's horrible, <laughs> but it did the job. It looks crazy. Yeah, but I love it, man. Right? And I can get... Uh, it's a little out of tune, but... Uh, 
So I, I just pull pull it up and I get like the the single coil, right? So, you know, I like to play a lot of the heavier kind of stuff. <laughs> but it's really cool. I love it's got like a it's got a, it can get heavy, but it's got the telly thing going on because of the, the bridge and the really light body. So it's got like sort of a telly snap to it, which is, I think is really cool. So, right? Like I can kind of do like the. So we can do, <laughs> we can go to country to. Uh, <laughs> do a little deal, whatever. Anyway, so I was playing that Rush song just to let you guys know that uh, I'm going to be uh, uh, filming some Rush stuff. S Dave Salantano did a couple Rush songs in the last couple months that are coming to Guitar Tricks. He did Limelight and he did uh, Tom Sawyer. And then I've got three coming up. So we're doing Closer to the Heart, Spirit of Radio, and Working Man. And uh, I'm going to be teaching those next month. They should be up by the summer. We're super, uh, of course, I'm Canadian. So, you know, we're super stoked for uh, the Canadian treasure rush. I learned that wrong all these years, and I'm going to have to correct it. It's going to be really hard to correct. But I... <laughs> anyway, it's going to be fun. I got some work to do, obviously. <laughs> Let's do some deal, right? Is the Lifeson chord in those songs? What's the Lifeson chord? I think it's those ones. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Andre, I appreciate that, man. That's really cool. Awesome. Uh, more Nickelback songs. I, yeah, fingers crossed, maybe. We got to get some Nickelback in here. A lot more. Uh, leave it in the song request forum. Uh, <laughs> Holy Diver. I'm originally from Calgary. Lived in Vancouver for a while. Uh, born in Edmonton, actually. Born in Edmonton, grew up in Calgary, lived in Vancouver, moved to LA, and now I'm in Nashville. So I'm doing like this super circuit kind of hook thing. But um, yeah, when it comes to Canadian rock, man, I could be on, on here all night playing your favorite Canadian riffs that no one else in the world has ever heard, right? Or no. <laughs> All that stuff. Right on. Cool, guys. Let's see Canadian riffs. Uh, what about, oh, man. Not, I'm drawing a blank, right? Like, uh, let's see. <laughs> you got it, man. But, uh... Saga, oh my gosh. Any guess who? Oh, man. I taught some guess who there. Can't remember it. Neil Young. There you go. Hey, Peter. <laughs> Yes, Mr. Bukovac's doing his thing tonight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna 
grab a cold one and watch the stream a little bit later, hopefully. Yeah, Andre, uh, Joe Dassin, uh, yeah, I've never heard of that before, but uh, definitely leave that on the request forum. Yeah, Guitar Tricks has to contact publishers and try to negotiate deals because they really are committed to doing things the right way with uh, song uh, licenses. So uh, yeah, definitely your best bet there. Glenn B, is this your only job? It's one of my only, I have I've do a bunch of stuff, but uh, I'm incredibly blessed to be able to sit here with a guitar in my hand most of the week. So mostly my only job, not quite though. I uh, do a lot of different things. Uh, Joe Walsh, Rush fan from Boston, living in North Carolina. Awesome, Bill. Right on. Triumph. Yes. Um. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, we got some day for wine going. <laughs> Or, uh, <laughs> love that stuff, man. <laughs> or, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gord. <laughs> Gord, you're still hanging out, man. I love it. Awesome, man. What else we got? Foot in cold water. Uh, um, make me do anything you want. I know the Helix version, man. <laughs> Lighthouse and Crowbar. Jim, that was just a little before my time. I was more of the 80s guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh. Oh, I got a line on you. Uh, oh, man. Uh, man, I can't remember the, the riff to that. Dang it. <laughs> uh, I could be on here all night. Lover boy, of course, lover boy. What? Uh, 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 what does UBU IBI mean? Oh, it's just a. UBU IBI, I think that's that's what it is. It's sort of like that Van Halen OU812 kind of thing. <laughs> Maybe Canadian riffs at a future lesson. That would be hilarious, but we'd probably lose a whole bunch of people. <laughs> I would be into that. Turn me loose. <laughs> Triumph. Come on, I know all that stuff. Um, <laughs> 
Yeah, we can do the. Uh... <laughs> Gord, I have to totally uh look up that I got a line on you, babe. The, the one I remember is uh, Alice Cooper did a cover of that in like the 80s, early 90s. It was kind of a hit. Had a great riff, but it, man, I can I cannot remember how the riff goes. Powder Blues, oh man, are you kidding me? <laughs> Shania Twain, Finger 11, man, I used to know Paralyzer. Don't remember that one anymore. BTO, of course, man. How about... Uh, <laughs> Wow. Yeah, check it out, Sandy. Actually, the drummer from Finger Eleven was on uh, the YouTube live from the band Took. It actually, it's so funny. We're talking about uh, Canadian riffs here, but uh, there's this. Canadian band called Took, where it's it's uh, known guys from Canada that play down in the States with a bunch of people. The guitar player for Shania and uh, Kelly Clarkson and the bass player for Slash. And they have this band called Took where they play just Canadian covers. And every Tuesday they have like a YouTube live where they interview people. And the drummer from Finger Eleven was on there this week. Uh, you should check that out on YouTube. Took, Took rocks. <laughs> Love it, man. Never surrender. Ah, uh, Mr. Daniel, you're here on black metal music. Slide techniques. We got it. And I got to go back and check out those bands you mentioned. Uh, I, but the week got away on me. So you, I have to apologize. I still have not checked out those bands, but I will. I promise I will. <laughs> Colin James, man. Oh, my gosh. I don't really know any. Um, all right, everybody. Favorite Canadian metal band, Kick Axe, right? Probably. I grew up with Kick Axe. Uh... <laughs> well, Mr. Daniel, I feel bad because I've got to check out these, these cool black metal bands. So I will do it. I promise I'll do it for next week. By the way, those of you still hanging in, next week we're going to do a guitar workout again. So we'll do a lot of playing then. Kick Axe. <laughs> Wolverine remembers. Yeah, on the road to rock. But I don't know. I always liked Helix. I always liked uh, who else was like way metal? Annihilator. There's a true Canadian metal band, Annihilator. <laughs> Gord, you're too kind. <laughs> Gord, I'm looking forward to hanging out one of these days sometime. Uh, hopefully we'll hook up once again for way too many cocktails, right? <laughs> Helix. Yeah. Do I know any Helix? Probably not. I'd have to like think about all that stuff again. <laughs> all right, everybody. We're well over. Way uh, Is there a way to get the printout early? Uh, usually I don't get it kind of done until the day of, Glenn. So check out. It usually goes up a couple hours before the session. I'll, I'll, I'll put the link in the description a couple hours before the session. Usually. So check it out. But yeah, it doesn't give you a lot of time. <laughs> but uh, I'm always down to the wire, right? All right, so yeah, the parts caster, rock and roll machine. All right, guys. Guys and girls, have a great weekend. Have a great next week. I hope uh, to see you all next Friday. And it's been a blast. And take care, everybody. <laughs> right on. Cheers. Ending stream.